All right, so we talked about a bunch of the different tools you can use and sort of walk you through them. Now I want to get into some actual, you know, analytics. What do you do with NetFlow? Um, I just, I just finding scanning. Um, I'm going to, my intent is to cover these sort of at a high level, give you English descriptions with the idea that whatever tool you're using, you can figure out how to do X analytic in it. So we're not going to walk through every analytic in every tool. Um, so uh, we're going to cover situational awareness analytics, getting a sense of what's running on your network, uh, you know, where your importance are, what you want to pay attention to, um, sort of baseline things. Uh, then get into a little more about hunting and how to actually find bad guys once you are oriented in there. In the network, um, we're going to talk about this mo mostly from the NetFlow only perspective, uh, but then we'll get into fusing NetFlow with other data sources, uh, host based data or other network based data. Um, talk a little bit about uh, looking at differences in sensor visibility and what that can tell you about your network. So, situational awareness um, getting a sense of what's running on your network and where it is. So. There's a paper uh, out of uh, CMU, SEI, CERT, guys who do SILK, uh, talking about network profiling using flow. They've got this whole methodology. Um, so they start uh, by gathering some information on the network, uh, you know, uh, figuring out sort of what's going on at a high level. You, you pick a subset of hosts you think are representative, uh, but a small subset, one you can sort of deal with, be in the order of a few dozen hosts. Um, you look at that, you, you baseline. Uh, services that are running, the, the servers that are running. Uh, then you start looking at sort of the odd stuff, so besides, you know, web, DNS, and mail, what other stuff is running on your network. Um, try to get a sense of what's going on. Um, you report, and then you sort of repeat. So you go back through and, and uh, widen out your search, look at a larger subset. So the idea is you start with a microcosm, try to make sense of it, and then you, you aggregate up. Um, so this is a screenshot from SolarWinds uh, NetFlow Traffic Analyzer. It's a commercial tool. Um, this is largely uh, where commercial tools are at. You get, uh, uh, this is in this case, uh, a couple of graphs. Um, this is interesting, it's talking about route reports, but mostly just this is talking about uh, top toppers, top sources, um, which is a good place to start and you need that information, but we're gonna try to go further than that. So. Uh, things like top talkers are, are popular uh, with, in, in commercial tools because it's easy to do, right? It's really easy to count up and see who's talking the most on your network. And it, it's important to do that, but um, you, you really do need to go further to find interesting things. You can go further, it's just the commercial sphere hasn't quite caught up to uh, the state of the art. They're getting there. So this is actually a uh, Real uh, network data from Ah, excellent question. Um, so with host flow, where you've got an agent on every box, you don't necessarily, you don't need to put a server in every closet. You do need uh, bandwidth between your, your endpoint hosts and some uh, repository to, to <laughs> sum up the data and collect it. Uh, but it's significantly cheaper to do something like plug host flow. So this is a, a actual FMX data. Um, the point here was that it's, it's hard to make sense of this, right? Uh, without context, um, it, it doesn't mean anything. So you need to start sticking labels on this, and depending on exactly uh, what you're looking for, you can like, layer different uh, levels of data on top of this and start making sense of your network. Okay. Um, so graphs are all well and good. Sometimes when you're digging into data, you just need uh, tables and charts uh, of, of data. Uh, so this is, again, actual network data. We were trying to baseline the network and get a sense for where some of the servers were uh, and what they were doing. Uh, really, it's just a, a spreadsheet. Um, so I don't here about the trade-off between storage and reliability. Um, in dealing with something like SILK, where you've got binary files, they're very small and very compressed, uh, and SILK tools work over them very efficiently, but then you can't do things like put that data in Splunk, uh, which is, deals with just asking data. Splunk is a long uh, search and collection framework. Um, so the, uh, on the one hand, you've got uh, binary files that are small. Uh, on the other hand, you've got ASCII files that are big. The ASCII files 
generally integrate well with other tools, right? So uh, a lot of things can suck up a CSV file or, you know, uh, you can otherwise manipulate an ASCII file such that you can read it with other, other tools. Um, and hard drives are cheap enough that I would argue some, maybe you do want to store all your data in ASCII. Um, because then you can actually uh, look through it, you can grab it, you can integrate it with other tools like Spark or what have you. Um, so storing, storing that flow in a binary format isn't always the right answer. Uh, it's worth thinking through your operational environment, what you're trying to do, and what your workflow from end to end looks like, what tools you have in place, and, and what needs to read that data. So when you're looking at NetFlow and, and trying to profile the network, there's a lot of different ways you can slice and dice your data. Um, the obvious one is sort of by IP address, and if you have it, by hostname. Uh, if you've got PHCP logs, where you've got know, <coughs> hostname from some host-based source. Uh, one of the things we did when we were trying to profile uh, assets in the network was just look at top three source and destination ports. So for this host, what uh, top three ports is it sending the most on? What three ports is it receiving the most on? You can that, do that either by uh, percentage of flows or by byte count. Those are not always the same, right? So if you have a lot of uh, high volume traffic, uh, that a lot of traffic uh, has a lot of flows, but a small number of bytes, uh, those two statistics are going to be different. Um, you know, do you think like for the average for the number of flows, for the duration, or for the uh, byte and packet count, or for the byte per packet count, right? So you've got bytes, you've got packets, and you've got average bytes per packet. Um, you can also look at the ratio of the sent versus received for all of those things. So uh, how many flows did this host send versus how many did it receive? How many bytes did it send versus how many bytes did it receive? Those kinds of things. Uh, and we've been talking a lot about TCP and UDP. Um, uh, of course, there are a lot of other protocols too, uh, both at layer three and at layer four, right? So uh, things like ICMP, um, and you've got a lot of other layer four protocols as well. Um, so it's worth understanding what, uh, what first off, what you're collecting. Are you just collecting IP or you're collecting other things too? And on top of that, what flow, what, what's your flow tool doing? Uh, what protocol is it looking at? What could you possibly be missing? Uh, if you're looking at IPv6, uh, some tools are still IPv4 only. So uh, particularly if you don't set them up uh, with IPv6 compatibility. Uh, so if you're not looking for IPv6 traffic and you don't see it, uh, you know, something you can potentially be missing. That's a huge blind spot. Um, and so this feature space is very rich. There's beyond just your standard you know, source port, desk port, uh, so that that case, there's a lot of ways you can slice and dice this data. It's worth thinking about what analytic questions you're trying to answer uh, and, and really choosing uh, correctly based on what you're trying to do. So, um, let's pause for it. So, this is actually uh, based off some research I did. Um, so, it's near and dear to my heart. Um, the idea is that uh, if you put back up a few slides of that graph, it's hard to make sense of um, both that and, and the spreadsheet at the individual level. If you're trying to do an individual host for any you know, reasonable size network, you're talking about thousands or tens of thousands of hosts, um, you know, it's just impossible to manually go through and figure out individually what's going on. Um, so that. Thank you. Indeed, you want to aggregate up, start looking at groups of hosts. <laughs> Uh, one easy way to do that is to just look at subnets. So this subnet has X traffic characteristics, had X IDS alerts, what had. Um, and that'll give you uh, a view that's based on uh, logical uh, proximity. So, so this host is, is physically or logically next to this other host, but it doesn't give you uh, a role-based view, right? It doesn't tell you what all your web servers are doing, or it doesn't tell you what all your clients are doing. It doesn't tell you what all your, your um, administrators are doing, right? So it's, uh, it's something that's easy to do if you're going to find something, but it's not as uh, fine brain as you want. You really want to look for semantic distinctions, like some of those groups I just mentioned. Um, the idea here is it helps inform situational awareness, which is this idea that's going to keep Harvey home to uh, get used to it. You want to understand what normal looks like, so then when you're looking at things, you can. Uh, 
and say, oh, well, I've seen this before. You know, I, I expected that. Or, wow, that's really weird. I want to take a closer look at this. Um, so what does normal look like? Then after you understand that, you can look at how things change. In particular, you can look at what hosts have changed recently, uh, either with respect to a particular protocol or just overall. Uh, next slide. So, some of the questions uh, that kind of clustering might help for. Uh, it, you know, an easy one you don't necessarily need clustering for is what web servers also act like web clients. So, if I've got a cluster of web servers, uh, I can then look and say, all right, so which of these are also web clients? Um, what has had similar users? Uh, so you can, if you can, if you've got additional data on users, um, probably from some host-based system, uh, maybe from the HTTP logs, you can start looking at uh, how users are acting and uh, do anomaly detection that way. So uh, usually my administrators uh, do X, Y, and Z, uh, administer codes from these boxes. But now all of a sudden this administrator is, is uh, this box is acting like an administrator uh, that they used to before. Something you might want to look into. Um, what hosts have changed? What hosts are using the protocols differently than they used to, or are using protocols differently than their peers? Um, you can get into other graph based questions too, like uh, what kind of things are present in the network, what hosts they contain, so you know, what hosts are highly connected. Uh, so this is a mock-up. Uh, again, just making the point that this diagram is pretty much impossible to read without more context, right? It's, it, it's not a very big network and it's still almost impossible to make sense of. What's the middle dot? That's a great question. This is just a mock-up. Big push. Uh, again, it's just a mock-up, so notional. But the idea is that you could then aggregate up and look, here's my cluster of DNS servers. Here's my cluster of clients. Uh, here's a cluster that has a lot of packets per flow. Um, so the shaded areas of clusters on here, the uh, dots themselves have colors and correspond to different roles. So red is my domain controllers, yellow is my MPP servers. And then you can do things uh, like look at this uh, cluster of DNS servers and say, well, most of these are, are blue, except there, here's this purple guy. What's he doing in there? Uh, you know, something you might want to know about. Um, but the idea is you, you can't. Uh, nickel and dime, if you, you know, if you're just looking for individual hosts, this is going to be hard to find. You need some way to aggregate up, uh, really think about things uh, at a group level, okay? And if you wanted to talk about this appliance sense, which is where the money is going to come from, mm -hmm. then you can talk about this as state appliance or uh, service isolation. It's supposed to be a dedicated box or something, yep. not the everything box. That's where this type of analysis would draw that out. Yeah, the next one point. So Drew mentioned, uh, for those of you who aren't BDCast, uh, compliance, which is often where budget comes from. Um, you can look at this from a state perspective. Uh, yeah, the next one point. Yeah. Um, so with these these visualizations that you're showing, do you have any suggested or preferred uh, visualization tools? Um, so I've done a look at Gethy, which is an open source visualization tool, and there's a lot of Nice, uh, what's that called? Gethy? Um, I don't remember how to spell it off the G E P H I. Okay, thank you. G E P H I, Gethy. Uh, it's great for sort of network visualization. Um, it's not uh, strictly related to computer networks, it does visualization for any number of you know, fields. Yeah, it is 1 30. Uh, it's been an hour. Why don't we take a quick break? In part because of what a lot of the commercial tools want to do is give you a red light that you know goes off and says this is bad. Um, and this is certainly uh, requires more uh, context and awareness than that. Um, but also, it's, it's just it's hard to do operationally. Um, a couple of issues. One is correctly selecting what features you're going to use and how you're going to take those distances. Right. So clustering is a standard machine learning thing that's used to cross a lot of different domains. Um, when you're doing clustering, you need some way to talk about how far apart two attributes are. Um, you know, if you're talking about something like byte size, you could, you know, you just subtract because they're numbers. Um, how do you tell how far apart two port numbers are? Um, you know, 
subtraction doesn't make sense there. Um, and, and there's some ways you can think about that. You can think about uh, grouping by, uh, you know, registered versus dynamic ports uh, or even specific ports. So if uh, two connections are on the same port, you're going to say they have their, their uh, distance of zero. Uh, but if there are different ports, you're going to have a, a large distance. Um, but exactly how you do that and sort of the, the devil's in the details part uh, it is, makes a difference for this whole cluster thing. And uh, really uh, determines how, how well it's going to work in practice. And, and there are some issues that are going to be ironed out. Um, there are also issues porting this between networks, right? So uh, any clustering algorithm is going to have different uh, parameters. Um, and certainly your, your uh, addresses are going to be different. Um, maybe the features you select need to be different for different networks, depending on the kind of traffic you see. Um, but getting this running on one network or, or a small subset of test data doesn't necessarily mean it's going to scale out to your entire enterprise or to a different network. Um, and it, it's more of an engineering challenge, but you need an external frame of reference. Um, can you go back one slide to this one? Yeah, that one. Right, so, so this mock-up makes sense because you have uh, clusters that have labels and you have hosts that have labels and you can tell the difference this purple dot is in this blue cluster. Uh, if you go back, if you think about the, uh, the slide we had with all the gray dots that weren't labeled, um, that, so these are actually clustered, um, but it doesn't mean anything because there aren't any external labels. You can't make any sense of it without context, right? You need labels both for the hosts themselves. Um, one way you can do that is role based. So you can say this is a Windows client, this is a web server. Um, they mean some sort of label for the cluster. Uh, maybe that's conferred from the NetFlow attributes. So you can say, excuse me, um, you can say this cluster has a large ratio of bytes to packets. Um, or maybe it's uh, calculated from metadata. Um, so uh, it's based on DNS traffic. Um, but if you need that, that's something that's uh, Necessary to really operationalize this clustering, um, right? You can also bring in alerts from other other tools. Uh, you can bring in data from other tools to stick on top of this map as well. So you could do things like look at where most of your IDS alerts are, um, those kinds of things. So maybe like an asset management system. Yes, exactly. That would be a great data to have on this. Okay. Yeah. So uh, for anybody who didn't hear, it's an asset management system. So you've got host-based data. You've got something like care by degrees DTS um, asset data based on uh, you know what the what the bots are right and then that, that also gets you user data which would be great to have on here um, so what users are acting similarly to other users um, if you cluster that way you can start looking for anomalies so uh, that's clustering 